All right, so welcome back to another episode of the differences between Berserk, the anime, and the manga. Let's get started with episode 7. Now this episode starts off with two noblemen discussing the events at the Tudor Army Stronghold with Foss. Now in the manga, Foss is not involved in this discussion. Guts walks by, gets provoked by one of the noblemen, and uses his crutch to crush his foot. The nobleman looks to retaliate, but is put in his place by a menacing glare. Nothing new here. Now Guts looks to visit Griffith, but various officials, bishops, and ministers are preoccupying his time at the moment. Guts, obviously, cares not for rules and decorum, so he knocks out two castle guards with ease. Casca henceforth punches Guts in the face, and proceeds to cry as she wonders why Griffith values Guts so much over her and everyone else. Guts then swings his sword on a set of castle stair steps as he thinks of his past encounters with Casca. Griffith walks in, the two discuss Nosferatu Zod, gods and demons, just like the manga. Guts explains that the Baelit scared off Zod as the swordsman remembers the prophecy that Zod foretold. Guts then wonders why Griffith would lay down his life for a single soldier. Griffith uses a rhetorical device to dodge the question. Now it's often said that love doesn't need a reason, it just is. So it's kind of interesting because you get a build up to their relationship in the way that Griffith will do whatever it takes to save Guts. And it's a nice bit of foreshadowing as well because he's going to go to the greatest of lengths to make sure that Guts never leaves his side because... Well, just because, and that just because, in a lot of ways, is because of a burgeoning, loving relationship. Of course, they're two guys, but as I've speculated in other videos, maybe Griffith is embodying the spirits of someone from long ago, and maybe the same situation is for Guts as well. So anyway, back on track, the King of Midland shows his gratitude towards Griffith and the Band of the Hawk. He introduces his brother, Urius. Now, as we know from the manga, his name is Julius. But in the anime, they call him Urius. Griffith notices Charlotte hiding in the shadows, but the king formally introduces her. Now, as they walk away, Griffith catches Charlotte as she trips and is slapped by Julius, or Urius, for laying his hands on the princess. Now here's the first difference of note that we have. Now in the manga, we see Julius get stopped by Foss, and they have their discussion about the upcoming autumn hunt, and how the King of Midland is going to ask Griffith to be the accompanying army that comes with him. And this could pave the way to him becoming a general. They then concoct the plan to have him assassinated by a stray arrow. Now, this event doesn't go away in the anime, however, it's sort of rearranged. So instead of this event happening now, we skip to the moment in which Guts is on top of the roof, thinking about Griffith and what it means to be with him and the Band of the Hawk. And as you'll find out in the next episode, the discussion with Foss doesn't happen until an episode later. Now after the pontificating by Guts, we then have some anime original content. And surprise surprise, it's more of a Don again. Like I said in episode 5, much of the anime is sort of building up the Tudor army, or as they're called, Tudor army sometimes. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that Adam gets a lot more screen time and a lot more anime original content. Uh, still, at this point in the manga, we don't even know who Adon is. But, in the anime, this is like the third or fourth time we've seen him already. So it's kind of interesting how he gets a lot more of the limelight and they make him more of an antagonist who needs to be defeated as opposed to the manga where he just kind of shows up and then it's like, oh, okay, it's over, he's gone. Now, Adon is tasked with defending another Tudor army stronghold. He explains the importance of the stronghold in controlling a road that allows troops from Midland to reach Doldry Castle. But with the Tudor army in possession of said road, it exposes the heart of Midland. Now while Adon thinks this fortress is impregnable, an anonymous soldier worries about a flank attack, possibly from a man-made raft. Which, of course, Adon just laughs off and thinks it's absolutely ludicrous. Now, in the brush, we see the Band of the Hawk. Corcus and the others point out that the heavy-equipped Golem Knights failed to capture this castle, and subsequently lost two-thirds of their own men on the bridge. So everyone's a little bit nervous about this mission. However, in a very stoic manner, Griffith steps forward, confident as ever, and says that it's their turn to dispose of the enemy. And that's the end of Episode 7. So about three-fourths of the episode was 
pretty much verbatim just like the manga not really any differences whatsoever however at the ending there we got a little bit of deviation julius and foss's meeting is postponed an episode it's rearranged and we get some anime original content with adon again so tell me what you guys thought of this episode and i'll see you next time with episode 8